Hey, Dave from Chaps. Uh, during all this COVID time, I thought that uh, I would make a series of instructional videos. This one is a uh, question and answer period. That, uh, these are questions that have been submitted either by uh, viewers or people that are looking on, to learn on teams or from teams themselves. Some of the questions kind of like are uh, retrospective in, in the way that it's, it's a team asking a question about an experience they've had. I'm just going to do the best I can to answer some of them. Um, you know what, I, I don't know everything, but uh, 25 years at this uh, can garner some answers. I'll try not to ramble on too much. Uh, as you can see, not a heavy script, just questions. So, questions, answers, and observations. Paradigm class part five. Mm. First one, what's the deal with orbs? Probably the largest question that we get and the largest claim that we get in videos and all kinds of stuff. And this is something that people can't, they can't uh, grasp really and, and is orbs. Uh, do you know what, even as a team when we first started, we you know started using night shot or videos and whatever, you're like, wow, and it's something you're not used to seeing. So it definitely changes your uh, spectrum, right? until you rationalize it, realizing that orbs will say 99.9% .9 of the time are dust particles or bugs. Depending on uh, when the flash goes off, depending on how close they are to the screen or to your camera lens, will change the size of them, uh, it'll change the color of them, it'll change all kinds of stuff like the prism of colors in the room. And the, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't have any airflow. Well, there's airflow. There's airflow when you move your hands. There's all kinds of stuff. Like, you know, when you're breathing in the room, there's airflow. So where it really comes down to it, it's like at a 101 when I get asked that somebody had said in the picture that this was their Uncle Jack. Unfortunately, it comes down to your own personal choice, kind of. Um, if you think that that's your Uncle Jack, then, and if you get comfort with that, then that's fine. You sit with that. Um, but... On a paranormal investigator's viewpoint, you're probably not going to get anywhere with a team on that particular matter. Um, it just comes down to we have to work with evidence and evidence that can be worked with and dis not dispelled, debunked. Uh, orbs, unfortunately, almost 100% of the time are completely debunkable. Therefore, it's it's not a mitigatable form of evidence. Day or night, why? How does it affect evidence? Shouldn't matter. Uh, investigated in the day, investigated in the night, really kind of comes down to the claims as well. Uh, for example, uh, Ashmore Estates, uh, which was an old poor farm, if you think about it, most of the activity would have been in the daytime. We did get evidence there, and the most striking evidence was actually during the day. Um, it, it really doesn't matter what time of day or night it is. It, it does come down to, to preference and logistics. Um, if you think about it, most people in the paranormal, and this is what I explain at, at my conferences, because people too say, oh, why does everybody investigate at night? Most people have day jobs. Um, most of the electrical influences are lower at night. There's less traffic outside making noise, so the ambient noise is lower at night. When you do it in the dark, which is one of the things, uh, is that your primary sense of sight isn't as acute, so you're not just uh, looking for things. Uh, so where it really comes down to it, it's kind of like practicality. Uh, and really, I mean, like when investigators do it for free, uh, you got to get some kind of joy out of it. I will say that I've investigated prisons during the day and during the night, and during the night's a lot more exciting. Your hearing is, is more of what kind of takes over and your, all that. And, hey, if anybody wants creep senses, I'll be the first honest one to say, as an investigator, you know, kind of like to get creeped out once in a while too, you know. So that's the honesty of it. There is no difference between day and night. It's just that at night time, uh, things are different. Um, you might see shadows a little better at night. Night vision kind of picks up on certain things, a little, you know. Uh, which gives you something to work with, but really it, it's, it's a practical thing, less noise. Uh, senses are different and uh, people work. Well, at least they did until this shutdown happened. 
locations and graveyards, commercial properties, houses, abandoned and permissions. Um, locations necessarily don't matter. Uh, we've had as many commercial locations and houses that are, are, are an issue. Uh, graveyards are a different thing altogether to investigate. Uh, really, graveyards are kind of like cool to investigate. They look neat. They have a creepy feeling. Um, but unfortunately, there's so much evidence that is uh, non-provable in a graveyard. You're going to get lots of orbs, you're going to get lots of uh, noises, and uh, outdoor investigations really, honestly, are, you know, they're, they're kind of experience-based. It's sort of like, if I do an investigation in a graveyard, walk through a graveyard, and I feel grabbed on the shoulder, and I see somebody walk by that isn't there, well, okay, cool, that's an experience. Something I'd love to catch on video, but uh, the, the chances of going into a graveyard and actually picking up something that you can put online and go, hey guys, let's peer review this, it's, it's, it's going to come down to a lot of people saying, yeah, that's, a, that's a firefly. And uh, outside, you know, it's, it's, it's just not, it's, it's not a, a threshold place. And as far as permission goes, uh, I don't advocate going through abandoned buildings or vexing and, and uh, investigating unless you've got permission there or it's like a really, no, not here anyway, not in North America. I see a lot of vexing in Europe where people don't care so much, uh, where the authorities don't care so much, but certainly nothing that's going to get you arrested uh, and we don't want to have anything that's going to get somebody hurt. That's really the major thing is the safety. We had uh, some investigators, I'll call them that. Uh, jumping in between abandoned buildings here in Toronto. And one of them died. Uh, you know, and they were drunk and all kinds of stuff. Don't drink during your investigations. Don't get high during your investigations. So it it's really comes down to this. No matter whether you're going to commercial property, even abandoned properties, whatever, get permission. Always best to get permission, and at the very least, somebody knows that you're safe. Uh, it comes right down to that. Um, have I ever been so scared to leave an investigation seat? been a few investigations we've had uh, a shock um, I'll say I'll, I'll say there was one uh, say about 10 years ago we were investigating a mansion and they had a funeral exhibit and I was doing a solo uh, in the funeral exhibit and my team was outside and uh, I felt a breeze to my face and I felt something sit on the couch next to me and that was kind of neat and then the lid from the coffin in front of me fell off. So, to be frank, it was the first time I've ever gotten up and bolted out of a room, managed to dislocate my shoulder on the door. Uh, luckily that night the DVR systems weren't uh, working properly, or my team would have great footage of me running and screaming like a schoolyard kid. Um, but it does happen once in the odd blue way, you need to collect yourself because you're human. And as a human being, you're going to get scared once in a while. Psychometric phenomenon. Haunted items. Yeah, there's shows about this. Um, I don't know about this. Uh, I grew up as a spiritualist. I grew up in a spiritualist church, so around mediums and that way. And uh, psychometry was a big thing. You know, take an item. I don't know. This pen used to belong to uh, no one, really. But let's say it belonged to a ship's captain. Could I feel it and get the energies off it? Uh, that's a really hard one to debate. We've actually been in an investigation um, in regards to that, uh, where a lot of possessions were in the home and there was a, a case in the courts about somebody's will. EVP we got was, that's my stuff, and it was pretty clear. That was kind of neat. Um, but that's really the only experience we've had to that. I, I don't, us really, a lot of teams have claimed that. And I know John Zaffis has got a show about it. Um, I just don't think it's, it's it's not proven, but I suppose things can contain energy. Um, why not? One of the things about what we do is this isn't a proven science, it's a pseudoscience, and you got to ask questions, and that's that. I mean, nothing's proven, but uh, it's nothing that's not, not proven. Right? <clears throat> How does stress affect paranormal activity or grieving? Well, you know, this can, this can go down into emotions and pareidolia. 
this can go into about 10 different subtopics, realistically speaking. But when you're you're all whipped out on um, you know, somebody's died in your family, of course you're going to want to expect them there. Your emotions are riding high, or if you're stressed out, uh, you're going to have more acute senses to everything around you, right? You know, um, that just comes down to like your your own personal biograph or whatever it is is uh, is uh, a bit more acute. So I think you could be looking for things. I don't think there's a scientific thing to it. I think that emotions can do a lot. Um, it's just my opinion. What if you don't agree with the equipment or the evidence the team presents? Well, that kind of that kind of comes down to what it is, right? You know, a team is going to is going to say what? You know, it depends. You could have a meeting, come in and say that there's a a portal in your home. And you get a team that comes in and doesn't get any evidence. And then again, it could just be that night, particularly the team didn't get any evidence, right? We've done places two or three times, and one time out of three, we got evidence. It's not like you're going to have somebody come into your home and every single time everything's going to go on as cute. You may not be interested in talking to them. Maybe the instrumentation to the spirit is too foreign and they don't understand what it is. There's no reason or given to it. But unfortunately, if a team gives you an opinion, uh, that's their opinion. If you don't like their opinion, go seek it from another team. Um, you know, until you're happy with the situation or accept it, right? I mean, teams are doing this voluntarily and at their own expense uh, to their own level of experience. And if, uh, if, if you don't agree, then nobody's forcing you to agree. I've, I've got several cases on the go right now where I've said to people, I can't, can't do much for you. Uh, try this, try this, try this. No, that's not it. You know, it's this. Okay, then I'm not the right person for you. We're not Ghostbusters. You know, all we do is collect evidence and give an opinion. This is also why we don't charge. And nobody should charge. Because we're not doctors. We can't write prescriptions. Um, we just give you an opinion and say, this is the evidence that I've got. And, and I happen to think that your, your house is fine. Remote visitation visualization. I don't know what to say about that one. Um, uh, people coming from other lands or to the pass on being where you are. Well, I suppose that they'd be attracted to you because they're related to you or want to be there. Remote visualization has been tested by the CIA and uh, you know, Art Bonner done some stuff like that. Um, we're experimenting with it because it's something to experiment with. Uh, it's one of the things about these pseudosciences, parasciences, is that uh, there's really kind of no right or no wrong. There's, well, it's kind of an obliterately wrong, but uh, it comes down to we don't know. So all you can do is play, right? Uh, you got all you can do is, uh, is keep trying, keep asking, keep experimenting. Uh, maybe one day you'll get that answer. How many different kinds of hauntings are there? <sighs> I've seen teams say like 13, 14. Uh, realistically speaking, I think you're kind of looking at uh, residual, uh, which is kind of like the same thing happens every single time, every single day, it plays on like a record player. You've probably all heard this explanation. Um, you know, it could be because of the quartz in the building or something that something had printed. Uh, I don't know, but there's no intelligence to it. Uh, one of the things I, I, I earmarked years ago was responsive where a certain cue will set something off, whether that's, uh, you know, you're smoking in the house and they doesn't like smoke, responds only at that time, or to a certain person. Uh, intelligent, you know, where you can actually have a, you know, ask it a question, you get an answer back, uh, which is neat, I don't get too many of those. And malevolent, this is demonic, uh, some people call it elemental. Um, I've never come across this. I've never come across a bad, mean, nasty, kill you spirit. Uh, lots of people do, but I guess. Uh, that's that. Can Ouija have an effect? Ouija is important. Uh, you know, to me it is, but I suppose others have had it explained that Ouija is kind of like a basic form of communication to lower levels. Uh, kind of like two tin cups and a wire. It's as basic as it gets, uh, but I've never had, we've used it on a few experiments and I've never had an experiment.
the experience with it. Because equipment need to be expensive. What do you need? Uh, well, the, no, when we started, we started with a cassette recorder. Uh, you know, now we don't necessarily have expensive. The machine I'm recording on right now, the handy cam I'm recording on right now, um, was over a thousand bucks. So it depends on what you need. Right? You know, this thing's got you know a little camera thing where it'll give you uh, picture and picture and, and all that noise and different levels of night shot and 4K and yada yada yada. Um, that's you know we saved up, we bought it. You know, uh, EMF detectors. You know. You get your basic K2, that's 50 bucks. Um, audio can get expensive, but you know what I mean? Like if you get like a standard task cam, you know, something quality wise, it's about 100 bucks. But nowadays you can use your phone. Uh, honestly, the second video camera we use on this team uh, is this uh, little uh, Sony. Uh, and you know what? I bought it used. It's probably 10, 15 years old now. Uh, so. It doesn't really matter. Um, there's other kinds of cameras you can buy. You know, I mean, I use a, an action cam, a Sony action cam. It had some nice little car shots and quick videos. Actually, all the other videos I made for this series were filmed on that. It's a, but it doesn't have to be expensive. Really, all you need is a, and and that's all. <clears throat> cameras. So this is like a I don't know. 12 megapixel camera point and shoot. I bought it at a flea market for 15 bucks. Battery case was corroded, so I told him that his, uh, I don't know, his transducer was fried on it, so he was off asking 50 and I gave him 15. And that thing's been great. You know, a lot of the stuff you have is just to, to take pictures for context, right? Why are all the claims similar? Yeah, that's a funny one actually. This is more comes from teams. Every house has got the lady you know, in period dress, and uh, every house has got the shadows and footprints, uh, all kinds of stuff. They all do. Um, and I'm not sure if this is why Hollywood uh, kind of makes you think it that way, or is you actually feeling it? I don't know. Um, claims could be similar because that's what our senses pick up. Uh, I know that, uh, say for an abandoned hospital, we've investigated. Uh, Damn, it must be like 15 or 20 hospitals. Always, you know, a nurse has been raped, a doctor killed himself. There's always a, a guy, that, you know, a grumpy guy that lives in a mechanical room. Um, I, and and uh, I think whether this is because these are shared claims that happen over time, or this is again comes right down to it's almost like a pareidolia or expectation. Like, uh, this is what we expect. You know, there's always the tall, thin guy, there's always going to be the really sick woman that stays in the room. Like, honestly speaking, I can tell you that in, in most places that we've gone that are commercially rental, they all have the same claims. Um, you know, um, and every every one of them has a morgue and this and that, when areas like that might have not had, a, they would have a, a room where you would have put the bodies, but like they talk about doing, you know, uh, autopsies and stuff in there, and they're not plumbed for it, nor, nor would there be an autopsy done if you think about it, like, you know, we do like a place like a, what was a nursing home, even like 30 years ago. The nursing home down the street, they're not doing autopsies in the nursing home. Um, they weren't doing autopsies there. But it does add to the glamour of things. Um, so, there's my answer to that. Uh, I think it really comes right down to it's what you expect when you set something like that up. So be really careful with the claims and look to back that stuff up. Uh, do, 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 do. Why do clients always see something during an investigation? This is from an investigator, I guarantee. Uh, Periodolia. It's what they expect. They're freaked out. They're really freaked out. Freaked out enough to have a team come in. So I think we have to take that at face value. They're they're already expecting something. Uh, have you ever brought something home with you? I have lots of people say this. Uh, no. I don't know anybody that has either. Uh, What's the deal with Xbox? So the Kinect SLS, you see this all over TV now. I don't particularly think it works. Uh, I have one built for me. We've used it on 50 investigations. Uh, to put it simple, if you put it in a room like this or any other room, 
you're going to see a lot of, uh, when you look on, TV, on uh, YouTube, you see lots of evidence where there's like a, like a bug shape. And it's like you're slinging back and forth, or it's hanging from up here, and it's waving back and forth. Uh, the algorithm, the program, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, and that's picking up humanoid type things. So it's picking up what could be an arm or a leg, um, or a drape that's moving. It's just, it's got a sensor that warps us back and forth, and it's just picking up moving things, trapping it. Uh, so it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, but uh, if you put it, the only way I can see it happening, this is the way we try to do it, is you know, you set it up in a neutral situation. I'll do a video about this soon too. Uh, put it in a neutral situation with a non-moving background, neutral. If I see one of these stick figures walk across the screen and I have a video camera next to it showing nothing I was actually there, that will be a good piece of evidence to me. I haven't seen it. Every single thing, and anybody can email me footage, there's none. You know, even when you put your hands out and something touches it, it's just, everything's got the same shaking hands. Xbox, uh, I don't believe works. But it, what we do, we test things knowing that it's probably never going to provide evidence. It's like my LED platforms for the floor that go off. It, we've made it, made it go off, we've created reasons for it to go off, but it doesn't. You know what I mean? It doesn't go off otherwise. It was expensive to buy it, I'm going to keep testing it. For that one day, it might work. That one in 1,000 chance. Um, it also comes down to, do you need to take that piece of equipment for that investigation? You know, are the claims suited for it? You know? Does an EMF detect ghost? EMF detects electron, uh, electric, electrical fields. Uh, Electromagnetic fields. Thanks, I had a brain for it. Um, we don't know if ghosts admit that. That's a theory. It's a reason to ask a question, and it's a reason to test a home to see if you know the fields in the home could be affecting the client. Temperature. There's no proof that a ghost is colder. It's just something that we theorize and test. And another reason to ask questions. Actually, we we hardly use temperature at all anymore. Um, why are there so many toys? Because people are easy. Toys give you immediate gratification. Things like the spirit box give you immediate proof. That's why. There's no proof to any of them. You don't need the toys. What you need is to go do an investigation. What are the claims? Bring the appropriate things that could test those claims. Test them. Test other kinds of equipment for theory's sake. Or, you know, but I think one of the major things is that you need to be honest as an investigator honest with probably nothing's going to happen and 99.5% uh, of the time you go to an investigation nothing's going to come out of it you got to use logic it's okay uh, does the age of a property matter not a lick I don't think so uh, residentially speaking the three best cases we've ever done uh, one of them was older uh, but the other two were less than 20 years old uh, may have a bit more to do with commercial properties, I think, maybe just more imprinting, I don't know. But age of a property doesn't seem to matter. I want to join a team, what do I need to know about teams and all that? Okay, that's the last question. So, uh, what do I need to know about a team? I want to join a team. Uh, first off, uh, lots of teams don't need 200 people. Uh, to know that you're going to need to be able to drive, you're going to need to be able to do things. Don't just go to investigations, you're going to need to be able to do research and, and uh, go over cases and, and your opinion isn't always going to be 100%. Teams can be a little political depending on the size, that can happen. Um, you need to know what type of team you're, you're joining. Is it a spiritual team or is it like a, an investigative team? Because if you go in there and say, I'm a sensitive, I'm a psychic, uh, on a pragmatic team, say like ours, it doesn't mean anything. Um, some teams have nothing but psychics on them. So it's kind of like uh, whatever your taste is on things and whatever your expectation is. Some teams investigate five times a month. In a hot season, we'll investigate every single weekend. you got to have a certain kind of devotion to that. And uh, probably the biggest point I'd have to say is don't go in with expectations. If you go in thinking that you're going to have a huge fight with a ghost, you're not. So, there's your Q&A session, guys. Uh,
hope to have more videos coming up soon on uh, the Connect. I'm going to do some videos on how to do video camera and, and photography and that kind of stuff, just based on our own opinions. So, play it safe out there, be good, and I hope you're enjoying these. I may not be the most exciting guy in the world, but hopefully you'll pick up a thing or two.